Hey everyone, Andy here, and today I'm back with the uh, Sony F3, and we're looking at the uh, S-Log uh, lookup table generation. So this is the, uh, for the fourth part of our series or so on lookup table uh, on the S-Log in the F3, and we're going to work with lookup tables. Lookup tables, if you don't know, are basically, basically uh, mathematical offsets uh, that would adjust uh, the S-Log video, in this case, uh, to make a more pretty image, something you might want to look at. So the, uh, the camera, the F3, has the ability to output uh, S-Log on the A and B connectors in 422 or 444. I also could put S-Log on the SDI uh, port or the HDMI port if I choose to. So, uh, my, so, I, so I can, on the SDI port and the HDMI port, the two on the side there, choose to put a lookup table on top of that in order to get a more normal looking image. We actually went over the built-in lookup tables in a previous part of the series, talking about what's, what's there, what's available out of the box. Now we're going to talk about making our own. Uh, so we're going to use a program on the computer called the CVP file editor from Sony in order to create these, these lookup tables that will we'll work with the camera. Important note is that the camera only really utilizes a 1D lookup table, which is limited in that it only affects uh, red, green, and blue independently of each other, just in essentially contrast or uh, levels in those, those particular channels independently, which is a little bit limiting. I cannot do saturation or hue shifts uh, in the image uh, per se. So, um, uh, so in order to do that, I'd have to do a 3D lookup table, which we can uh, talk about in a future part of the series. Uh, so, uh, 1D lookup tables work in the camera only. Well, we're gonna, we're gonna, what we're going to do to start this process, though, of making 1D lookup tables for the camera is to save the user LUTs that are in the camera already uh, to an S by S card just to get a starting point. So, what I'll go ahead and do uh, is go to my computer here. I'll go ahead and load it up. And I have on the computer here a program called Scopebox, which I can see the feed from the camera on. Now, I've already here, but basically I want to go down to this LUT memory setting in the Others menu, which is there, the Others menu. I go to LUT memory, and I'm going to uh, choose to uh, store my current lookup tables to my S by S card. I'm going to go ahead and overwrite the ones I have on there already. And now this is going to de write the default uh, lookup tables that I have in the camera to the S by S card that I have that I have in the camera. So why I'm doing this again, just as a starting point reference, uh, again, uh, just to get going. So now that I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and use the camera essentially as a card reader. Attach a little USB plug right to the camera here. Pop that in. It's going to ask me a question. Do you want to connect to USB? Sure. And now we'll go ahead and minimize this. And I should be able to uh, get the S by S card here. There we go. Uh huh. And then in the uh, S by S card, I have a folder called Sony. BPAV is the footage. We don't want that. We want the phony, Sony folder, Pro, Camera, HD Cam, and way down here are these four lookup tables. Now, lookup tables are generally just speaking text files. We can edit them uh, in a text editor, like Text Edit, and we can see that they basically are mappings. Uh, by the way, the metadata is up here. It says it's S log. 709-8180 has the name of the file in there. It's a mapping of red, green, and blue uh, and values from 0 to 1023. It's a 1024 or 2 to the 10th 10 10-bit 10 type operation. If, you, if I scroll down here and scroll, you'll see the mappings first for red and then later you'll see I passed it, but you'll see the, uh, a, a green setting, etc., and then blue below that. So it's a really straightforward uh, mapping of data uh, that's in the lookup table now. So uh, these are great. These are all, by the way, the default for all the lookup tables out of the box, the user ones, is just 709, uh, straight seven, S log to 709 map. I want to modify them. I want to use a program, though, called the uh, CVP file editor, which I have here. Here it is, CVP file editor. I'm going to go ahead and just delete this one that I've started before. Yeah, go ahead and delete and get started fresh. Uh, so the CVP file editor, which I have here, has uh, a couple things going for it. I want to delete this too so we can get going. Uh, the first is the uh, gamma menu, which is basically the traditional menu you would see if you used this program before, uh, which basically allows you to specify your own gamma tables for cameras like the 9000 and the 900R and the F23, F35. This is an important option. Uh, we, we can utilize this as well to modify the gamma curve, but really what we're after is, is not a gamma curve right away. It's a monitor LUT or an M LUT. Click on that, monitor LUT data. Now, looking at this menu, there's a lot of stuff going on all around. Uh, but we're really prim primarily concerned with uh, generating monitor LUTs and then using this box down here to actually do some configuration. The rest of the data, like this MLUT group 
and the camera and monitor LUT settings here are all related to basically the F23, F35, and the future of the F65, where I can actually connect to the camera via Ethernet, to a, a camera in general via Ethernet, uh, like the F35, and actually turn on and off lookup tables that way, uh, and send lookup tables directly to the outputs, etc., do modifications sort of on the fly. The F3, as far as I know, really only does lookup tables via the S by S card loading in and out, so we really can't utilize any of these things, including this big connect button up here doesn't do anything for me. Uh, so I'm really only going to utilize this window and this window here. That's it. Uh, so how I make a, a monitor LUT is I can go to this little new button, new, and I'll make a new one called Andy D log. Okay, Andy D log is made, and by default it goes right to saying, okay, I'm going to start at S log, uh, and then I'm going to uh, it has, says ASC CDL off. I'll explain that, and it says I'm going to go to ITU 709. Basically, it's a set, it's the same 709 S log LUT that's defaulted in the camera already. Great. Uh, but if I want to change that, I come down to this menu here and I can choose uh, first an input transform, which I, uh, I don't want to do. This is uh, to do scene linear or cine on. This is good for other applications and posts, but for, uh, for the camera, we just want to keep it uh, standard. And then I can down to below that and I can choose the output. Now, before I do this, this input, this middle part here, the CDL cho choices, if I turn that on, I can actually modify lift, gamma, gain, and saturation. This is all really cool stuff, but unfortunately, it doesn't actually work in the F3. Again, as far as I know, from what I've tested, the CDLs won't travel through. So if I do that, it just won't work. Go ahead and try it yourself, though, if you want to find out. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the CDL file. And I'm really just concerned, really, with this output transform, which is going to take S log to something. I'm going to click on that. And then I have a whole list in, of, of things in my library, of items in my library. Uh, that are basically default gamma curves that the, that the CVP ships with. And if you remember looking through the lookup tables in the camera, uh, you're, they're actually named the same thing as these. Hyper gamma uh, is HG. This, these next three numbers are the percentage of the dynamic range, 800% being the most. Then I have a, a white clip level of 100 or 109, and then a green, uh, gr I mean gray level, and the gray level of 33, 36, or or 40, depending on what I'm after. Basically, this is just showing, it's just giving you an idea what the, what the hyper gamma curve is in an explanation. So, uh, we already have a lot of these 800% curves in there. If I wanted to load something that was more similar uh, to um, the, uh, what, what the cine curves are in the e on the F3 to begin with, the cine 1, cine 2, cine 3, I could actually choose this uh, 460 09. Uh, 9, gray 33. This is basically very similar to the uh, Cine, Cine 1 curve in the camera. I'll click on that, hit OK. Hit okay. And now it's going to be going from S log to 460.09, gray 3. Now that's basically just making the conversion between the two happen on the fly. So it's taking the S log gamma to this new gamma curve. And if I choose to export monitor LUT, I can actually go back to my card, all the way down the chain here. I'm going to choose to actually just overwrite one of the existing ones with the names. The names matter here because these are the, this is what can be loaded in and out of the camera, the one through five. So keep the names the same. Go ahead and say save, and I'm going to replace the existing one with that. So now, if I go back to my number one file here and go to the text editor, you'll see that I have the, the name is being Andy D Log, and it has my new mapping in there that I've just created. Now. I didn't, see, I didn't actually do anything just yet in terms of modifying a, gamma, uh, a lookup table. I just loaded in basically out of Sony's library right into the monitor, right, monitor LUT output. So that's how I do it quickly. Now, if I wanted to actually modify the curve, uh, I could do that by uh, using the gamma section of this program. Go to gamma here. And I could say, okay, well, I want to load into a, uh, from the library. There's a little library button here. I want to. So you know what I really want is I want something pretty contrasty. I want this hyper gamma uh, 325 curve, uh, 09, G40, add that. Okay, cool. I want to start there. And you see the curve is it's pretty, uh, it's, it's different. And I'd say let's, uh, it's, it's, this is a 325% curve, so it's fairly limited dynamic range uh, with a high gray point of 40%. But let's say I wanted to like really make the, the middle pop a little bit more, really bring up the low end. I can do so with a little modification. We'll clean this up in a uh, really second here. And it'll warn me if it goes kind of uh, out of uh, conformity there. But let's say I like that curve. I don't have any idea what it looks like, by the way. I'm just modifying 
based on my best guesses here. Not really changing the high and low in this case. I know it's a pretty low dynamic range curve. But they bump the mid tones up so it make the middles really bright. Uh, and they, they actually the highlight's a little bright too. This is 80% we're talking about here. So maybe you want to move that down a little bit. Just a, like a little bump here like that. Keep modifying if we want to. All right, just a little change is what we'll do. Sounds good. So I made a, I made a modification. Again, I don't know what it looks like. Uh, but we can save that into a monitor let by going back to the monitor let settings. Let's make a new curve called uh, Andy uh, High High Con. Go down to here, we're going to load the library, and at the very bottom, you're going to find that file that I just made. This Hyper Gamma 32509 was made by me on the today. There it is, and that's it. So now I have that setting. Again, monitor export MLUT. We'll go into this file. This is the, this is my S by S card, by the way. I'm writing right into the S by S card that's in my camera, using the camera as the card reader. Click on 002. That's my second file down. Save it. Replace it. Yes. And just to confirm, back to here in text editor number two. Again, I get Andy Hycon. Right. So uh, these are my lookup tables. They're loaded in there. I can do this several times. I can mess around uh, with the, the settings and load up to five into the camera at once. Let's say I like that, what I've done. Uh, for, for now, we're just going to load the camera, it, it back into the camera and sort of see what, what happens. So I'm going to go ahead and eject my file. Boop. There it goes. That went away. I want to go load up scope box again. I'm going to go ahead and refresh the source here. There we go. And I have my feed for my camera now. I'll go ahead and open up my iris here and I have a little picture of the DSC cam bells. And right now I'm looking at uh, S-Log, by the way, just in the camera. This is, again, just the camera feed coming in. Uh, and I'm just looking at S-Log coming out of the camera. I'm going to my menu. And I'm going to go ahead and now that I've loaded the, 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 the LUTs on there, I want to go ahead and uh, choose LUT memory recall to pull in the lookup tables that I've just generated. Recall. Bump, bump, bump. Done. Great. So it worked. If it didn't work here, I've done something wrong. If I turn the CDL on, I won't be able to recall those files anymore. If I've made a, a lookup table that doesn't like it, it'll, it'll reject it as well. But it, because it took it in, we're assuming that it, it's okay with these lookup tables, good or bad. Uh, and so I'm going to go back into my menus here and go down and turn the S-Log lookup table on. Right away, you see the contrast change. And now I can see the different ones that I've chosen, including my Andy D-Log and the Andy Hycon. So I like the Andy Hycon. Hit menu, see the difference there. High contrast, I'll turn this back off versus, uh, you know, uh, the, uh, the just regular LUT. So we can see that really quickly here. I'll, I'll go ahead and turn off the output here so you have an idea what it looks like when it's clean. And we'll try one more time. My Andy D-Log off and on, and my Andy Hycon off and on. So you see what I did there? I made a lookup table. I've loaded in the camera. Uh, again, not really shifting saturation, but I am adjusting contrast, which does improve the image quality overall. So uh, that's the first step. I'm generating lookup tables for the camera. You see how to do it. I'll post the CVP file editor link on our website so you can download it for yourself. Uh, it is kind of a tedious process without having any way of visualizing it. You change things you don't know. But the next step, uh, we'll try to do an external box that can, can, can look to take this D-Log LUT and actually modify it a little more to make a 3D lookup table. So uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.